it's time that you expand your arsenal and not be a one trick pony on the golf course anymore because being able to hit many different kinds of golf shots at any given time is sort of fun, but it also makes you more dangerous. It also allows you to take advantage of certain holes on the golf course that you haven't been able to take advantage of in the past. You can start hitting way different shots without having to think about technical changes in your swing. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, so a pretty common question that I get from amateur golfers is how high should I be teeing the golf ball? Now, I'm not gonna go into all of the ins and outs as to what could be optimal for certain situations because that would be a 25 minute video and Lord knows that none of you wanna sit through a 25 minute video. It's, it's hard to get you guys to sit through a six minute video. But what I wanna do today is I wanna talk to you guys about the three tee heights that I use personally and show you how each of those move very subtly around in my stance. And I'm gonna tell you how I use these on the golf course. In fact, you can start using these on your own and start playing around with the tee heights and start playing around with the ball position and start looking to see what kind of shots you produce. Now, this middle ball right here, when I set up to it, is gonna be what I call my stock shot. This is the shot that you're gonna see me use most in a round of golf, where I will have the ball teed up to where I have half of it on the face and half the ball above the face. You're gonna notice that my ball position is off of my left instep. That's a very common practice in the world of golf is that we wanna get the ball position up far enough. Why? Well, because we want, with modern day drivers, they're set up for very high launch, very low ball spin. And so by moving the ball position further up in our stance, it allows the swing arc us to catch the golf ball more on the way up rather than on the descending blow. That's the first thing. But you have to treat this within reason. You can see that these three balls have very small adjustments both in the height department, but also in the forward and backward department. When you look at this ball that's closest to me, this is a shot that I would use very seldomly in a round of golf. In fact, if I were to play a golf course that had 14 driving holes on it, so 14 holes where I hit driver, you would probably see me hit this 12 of 14 times, this stock shot. Why? Well, because I'm trying to keep the ball in play and I'm trying to make sure that I am using the control and speed bounce. Now, this other ball that sits further back is going to be what I call my low boat or my squeeze shot. Why I use this shot right here, again, it's gonna be a lot lower on the face. It's almost down to the middle, maybe a little bit lower than that. I use this shot with a ball position, one ball back of where my stock shot would be. I use this as a way for me to be able to keep the golf ball down and to be able to hit little squeeze shots that move a little bit more on the left or right side. Now, just by teeing the golf ball lower and moving the ball position back in the stance, that small amount, what that tends to do for a lot of us at home is it tends to get our subconscious to help us steepen the angle of attack a little bit, which is gonna now promote a little bit more of a downward sort of hit to it. I'm not talking about like you're hitting a wedge or a nine iron or an eight iron, hitting it down where you're six and seven degrees down, okay? It's gonna take from where I'm optimized in my stock shot, it's gonna adjust it down in the angle of attack department very subtly, okay? So what I'm talking about here is that if I were to set up on TrackMan right now and I were to hit my stock shot with my ball position half on the face half above the face, and my ball position off of my left heel, what we would notice is, is that I'm up three, four degrees or so with a path that's in to out, and I have the club face rotating through there enough to where I hit a good high draw with my ball spin staying down right around 2200 RPMs. That's my optimal sort of environment. That's different than what your environment would be. So I like those numbers because, again, that's what I like to see on the golf course. When I move this ball position back, okay, in my stance and I tee it a little bit lower, when I make the same exact golf swing, what you're gonna notice is, is that my angle of attack numbers come down substantially. I'm not three and four degrees up anymore, I'm right around that zero mark. That again is where I feel optimal. And then we've got it dialed into a point where my spin rate isn't gonna be through the roof. Yes, it's gonna be spinning a lot more than what you would see of these two balls. The third and final ball that I have is one that I will use in a round of golf from time to time, more frequently than I do the, the low boat squeezer. This is where I tee it up as high as I possibly can on the tee. Most of the ball is above the face. You'll notice this sort of setup for a lot of long drive guys. They get the ball way up in the air because they're trying to launch that thing. I like it up here just because again, these are optimal for me where I kind of sit on that, I sit on that fine line of control and distance, right? So if you, if you start hitting it further, but you don't have any control of it, then you're gonna hit it further into the woods. I could tee it up higher and I could get the ball position a little bit more forward in my stance, but that's when I start really getting myself in that position where now I have a hard time finding my ball. But just by moving the tee height around 
and moving the ball position more forward, what this is gonna produce is it's gonna force my subconscious to feel like I'm trying to hit more up on the ball. Where this one would be, where I feel like I've gotta kinda of go down and get it onto the center of the face. So you can see that I would have a little bit more forward shaft lean here. These are things that have to be treated within reason. So what I want you to be able to do is I want you to be able to expand your mindset on the golf course. When you go to the driving range, play around with this. You don't always have to be working on your golf swing. You can go out there and work on little small adjustments like this. Learn what your golf swing is capable of producing. So let's look at a stock shot first. So ball position again is gonna be off my left instep towards my left heel. I have half the ball on the face, half the ball above it. And I'm just gonna make a really good aggressive swing here. Okay, this hit pretty good there. Now I'm gonna move back and hit the squeeze shot. So what you're gonna notice is, is that the left instep stays in the same spot. The ball position is back a full ball now. I'm gonna still set up the exact same way. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is try my best to visualize the shot that I'm hitting and I'm just gonna make the same swing. Okay. And then the third and final height is where it's really far forward for me and really up in the air. This is when I'm trying to let it loose on a par five or there's a drivable par four that is stretching it for me. I get it as far up in my stance as I possibly can. Tee it up above the face. So three of the same swings, three different tee heights, three different ball positions produced vastly different golf shots. Now I'm ready to go on the golf course and start using these to my advantage so that I can start playing more offensive golf rather than being defensive.